Luke 9, 22, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slayed and be raised the third day. You know, that's one of the one of the hardest things for us Christians to do is to deny ourselves and take up the cross and follow Jesus. I don't know what it is about self. I don't have no problems that way because the Lord allowed me to, to not to have no education in, in the natural who I would have to depend on him. You know. You know, a lot of you learned how to depend on yourselves. I, I, I can't make it. You used to have a brother led singing. He used to sing it a lot. I can't make it by myself. You might have made up them little words. I don't know. I can't make it by myself. I need the Lord. And, and most of us we get the vision that, that we got it. I used to have people come up to me and say, if you got it, I said, no, but I've got it to get. That's where we got it at. We got it to get. Ain't that right? You know. You know, it's just like the natural brother. Page over here, he's a professional electrician and all that kind of stuff and plumbing and all that. And I know no doubt he's had a lot of people uh, want to go to work. Boy, I can do it. Man, I know. And all they do is mess it up. <laughs> I guarantee you, they've got a people, he had to redo more jobs. And I believe that's the way it is with Jesus. He, you know, we all can do it and all we do is Fix it. Well, it can't be fixed. <laughs> I remember I worked with a guy like him once. He said, boy, these greenhorns, he said, he made me go and tear everything out, you know. <laughs> Get out of them houses. <laughs> and, and then he'd start all over. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, that's the way it is today. You just about got to tear down everything. Christianity is built on in this day. I mean, you know, we, we're not built upon this foundation. Jesus said you got to build on this foundation. Up on this rock, I build my church. And it, it, it takes lots of prayer. Lots of prayer for me and you to be able to stand and to withstand what we've got to go through when the Lord is making us. I mean, we got to be made. Jesus said to them all, now listen to him, he said, he said what he's going to have to go through Suffer from all them preachers, be slain, and be raised again the third day. And then he said to them all, If any man will come after me, that's what I want to talk about in a little while. If any man, that means woman, is going to follow Jesus, he's not putting a put a picture out here. Want some. There was a couple want to be his followers. And the 
be his followers. You know what he turned and told them? Foxes have holes. <laughs> Bird have nest. Son of man has nowhere or no place to lay his head. Now do you want to follow me? <laughs> you know, I think some people want to follow Jesus for the bigness in it. Not for the self-denial in it. But for the bigness in it. You know. But there ain't no pride in Jesus. He's meek. He's humble. He's a servant. He said, the Son of Man didn't come to be minister to, but to minister. You know, a cross bearer is a minister. You know, everybody wants to be, oh, be a pastor or, or some, somebody, you know, like they're better than everybody else in the church. While the minister, man, he's the one who cleans out the toilets. <laughs> You want to clean toilets? <laughs> Man. I got a job one time. And they put me cleaning out toilets. God, I thought, Lord, am I sure I want this job? <laughs> I like old George Jones. I'd about to say, take this job and shove it. <laughs> Man. He didn't like that job, did he? He said, take your job and shove it. <laughs> Glory. Man, this, this, is a, this ain't a proud way. If any man will come back to me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. People that bear the cross are losers. Jesus once said, except you lose your life for us, for the Son of Man's sake. You know. You know, there in the scriptures you'll find a lot of people saying, Boy, I'm gonna reign with Christ. I don't know where you are or not. A lot of people know who the people going to reign with Christ are. They're the mortars. If you look in the Bible, the real people that's going to be reigning with Christ at, at one day or a thousand years, ever how long it's going to be, it ain't going to be me and you. It's going to be the mortars. Read it in the Bible. We, you know what cross means? Death. If any man's going to follow me, let him take up death. Death. Call Sister Terrell. Last night I didn't sleep much, all this going on over there. Call Sister Terrell. She. Said, bring it on home. Just come on home. <laughs> she said, <laughs> bring my man on home. <laughs> <That's your heart. laughs> bring it on home. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> you know, bless these. You know, Sister is a real kind of wife like the preachers used to have. You know, preachers' wives used to serve with their husbands, but now they want to boss them. <laughs> well, let's get off of that. Most sister audiences either wise or want to be one. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I want to be a disciple, don't you? A disciple is a follower. I want to be a disciple. 
If any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily. You know, you've you got to die every day you live. You know, we could learn in the morning we wake up and then on our knees and say, Lord, what's on the menu today? You know, don't you wish somehow the Lord had just print you out a, a menu every day and send it to you by an angel, lay it on your pillow and you wake up and look at that. Sometimes just lay there and wonder if you'll read it or not. <laughs> just wonder if you... Lord, I don't want to read this or not today. <laughs> Glory. But it is. It's death every day. A real follower of Jesus, it's death every day. That's the reason Jesus don't have many followers. I'm talking about real, biblical, self-denial followers. But I believe he's going to have them. Something's getting ready to happen. I know there's going to be a revolution in this country one of these days. You may not believe it. You may think we got it together, but you're going to see it. I saw it. Atlanta being burnt. I seen Birmingham being burnt. I seen these major cities across the United States burnt. God ain't going to allow uh, uh, this party bridge praying, party pitching, card, card playing nation to continue in its ways. You, you hear me? Wine, bibbing, drinking, bossing, better than everybody else. God ain't going to allow it. When, when, when trouble hits, when trouble hits, you know, I had Brother Barney to call up Brother Dave the other day, you know, four or five days ago. Everything just well. Now everything ain't well. God can, God can, uh, when people don't want to serve God and people don't want to deny themselves, God can put this country in a chaos before night. They've already got our electrical system set up, you know, where they can pull a switch up here and put us all in darkness. We don't bow our knees to them. They don't got it now fixed where you can't get a job without but, uh, a bowing down. You don't know what businesses has to go through to, to even get licensed to operate. The scrutiny they got to go through is unreal. And the taxes and, and, and what they got to pay for a little piece of paper that, know, that, know, that they know more and more than printed the paper. When it printed that paper, made that law, don't even know how to put, put a, a toilet stool down. <laughs> they don't know how to drive a shingle on a house. They couldn't change a tar if it went flat. But yet they, they think they can run a country. I mean, we need God. And as all gets right back to the church, somewhere or another we lost our self-denial. Somewhere or another we lost our self-denial. Brother Allen said it took him 13 years to do what the Lord told him to do. 13 things. Then he would not only preach the gospel, but he would bring healing to the sick. And he said them last two things. Last three things. He never would tell the last thing. The last two things he recorded him, 12 things that God told him was take up the cross and deny himself. You may think you got yourself denied. But when you always, no more than everybody else, you ain't got yourself denied. When you always want to run things, you ain't got yourself denied. When you can't take the back seat. You know what's wrong with folks?
I remember me and a fellow one time went in a meeting, two couple of seats up there. He said, let's go up there and get on the platform. I said, no. They don't know me. And I said, yeah. Boy, he walks up there, you know. Went up the steps. One of them sat down one of them chair and that under sat empty. <laughs> I had to watch someone come over and tapped him. Called him for somebody else. <laughs> Boy, I was so glad I didn't go up there with him. <laughs> You better quit letting people talk to you in notion. Get go seat yourself. You better let God seat you. <laughs> I said, you better let God seat you. If God seats you, there ain't no man can unseat you. Uh, you hear what I'm telling you? I said, if God seats you, there ain't no man can unseat you. When God fits you in the ministry, when God fits you in his kingdom, ain't no man can take it out. When God rich put your name in the book of life, ain't nobody can race it out. Ain't no preacher can turn you out. Ain't no organization can turn you out. For whoever will save his life shall lose it. Well, we're good at life saving, aren't we? But you know who we save? <laughs> and we know we're good at life saving. It's me and me and me and me <laughs> and me. <laughs> You may go out here and say that the Congress may say the eyes has got it, but it ain't the way it is with the Lord. Well, you don't even see them people vote. Man, them guys up there, you see them on TV, they say the eyes has got it. I ain't seen nobody voting. And they say the eyes has got it, and they just run it over the people. That's what the church is doing. That's what preachers are doing. They think the eyes has got it, and they're running over the people and shoving this stuff down our throats. That, that don't make us grow in Christ. They're giving us, they're giving us food, but they ain't giving us meat. You know what the church is living on on Sundays, and when they come into churches on Sundays and the ones out on Saturday, they're living on spam sandwiches. <laughs> Man, I don't eat that stuff. Spam and jam sandwiches. <laughs> Somebody asked me one time, I said, what's a jam sandwich? I said, you jam two pieces of bread and wish you had something between it. <laughs> and you eat it just like it's got a, got a piece of hamburger patty in there. <laughs> That's all the church has got is jam sandwiches. No meat. Plenty of programs, but no meat. Nothing to resist sin. Nothing that can resist sin. Did you know if we get the right kind of uh, spirit in us, the right kind of Holy Ghost, the right kind of life in us, that we have a resistance? We have a spiritual immune system that the devil can't come in and overpower you and make you sick. He can't come up on your backside. You got the whole arm of God on. You are strong in the Lord. You are self-denial, strong in the Lord, and the power of His might. Yeah. I told Sister about four days ago, I said, I feel there's like something wrong over yonder. Pray with me. that God will let this thing, I don't want to get over there and you know, and if you want God's will, I love going over there. But I sure don't want to get myself over there and can't get out. Man, there's people, and this is the day and the time that Lord told me our going and coming is going to, have to be altered. We, it's, it ain't going to get no better. 
When the Bible said perilous times, he means dangerous times. This know also that in the last days, dangerous times. A fellow come up to me one time, I think he was a Baptist fellow, said, do you believe you can get to heaven uh, without the Holy Ghost? Wanted me to tell him. I looked at him. I said, sir, I won't I, I even go downtown without it. <laughs> I won't go downtown without it. Now, does that answer your question? I said, right, you better not even go downtown without the Holy Ghost. Better not even go to the post office without it. You might open your post office box and might be an internal revenue letter in there saying you owe a bunch of taxes. And then you wish you'd have the Holy Ghost before you got it out. How many have went to the mailbox found one of them envelopes in there? Scared to open it. I got one and I was scared to open it. And I said, well, I got to open it. Got to open it, and about $38,000 check was sent back to him. I said, man, Lord, I ought to have been shouting. <laughs> Instead of being scared, I ought to have been shouting. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. But you don't get many of them. Daily. I don't even give you Sundays off. You know, most of these preachers I tell her, in my day, the van day, Monday nights was rest night. Saturday night, they give that they didn't have a church because the pastors wanted the the people to be sure they got in Sunday school. Sunday school more more important to them. That's what killed the church. Sunday school more important to them than, than an old fashioned Saturday night meeting. That's one of your best nights for me. You know. Man, I can just have a knockdown, drag out to midnight, and if you want to go a little longer, people will be, still be there because they ain't going to be going to bed no hell. Man, they, you know, uh, during the week, some of most, a lot of them go to bed with the chickens. Saturday nights, they want to cackle. <laughs> they want to jump up on the bench and crow. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Ain't that right? And that's what Saturday night, man, that's the time we just get in there and man, just just throw a party for Jesus. Say, man, let me know we need we need a party for Jesus. Man, this is party time. This is Holy Ghost time. This is victory time. I guarantee you, sister, will have a party for me when I get home. I won't stay, but a few days we'd already uh, got lined up to go to some churches we ain't been to. Uh, at least four days. Listen to this. Whoever will save his life shall lose it. How many of us have saved our lives? I remember right here in Atlanta. Don't remember the people. If they did, I wouldn't give their names. But the man had... Two kids. Randall Pam was just small. And he was a good evangelist. And I guess his wife probably griped a little. And he gave up a, a soul winning ministry to pastor and be with his family. One day there was a fire. And there was a storm come up and struck. And they, him and his wife had gone out. When they got back, the kids was trapped in the house and the fire. The kids went down in the fire. And, and he cried and wept said, think about it. I gave up the evangelistic ministry. 
for these kids. I know up in, in a place in Indiana, I held a meeting up there. Somebody always puts us still some ranch to that. Somebody, how about take a still some ranch and open it? <laughs> Thank the Lord. And uh, and I was holding a revival up there and. Uh, pointed my finger up in the, in the balcony had a back in that church told a man up there you better obey God had two kids you better obey God you know you don't let people you don't let family you don't let God said forsake children, forsake how. Don't mean run off and leave them like that. It just means put me first. God said if you love houses, land, wife, children, more than me, what? Anybody know what he said? Not worthy of me. You know, that's sad, ain't it? But that's the truth. That's absolutely how it is. That's absolutely how it is. We don't have no self-denied people. And people don't like this kind of teaching. You know. They don't like forsaking all. They don't like forsaking all and, and taking up the cross. Sister said, when you come in, I said, first I got to relocate and see what. <laughs> 